You know, the uh, tribulation Trump is the last white hope, the great white hope, right? Last hope for white people going into extinction. And when Obama came along with his half white self, Obama got a white mama. <laughs> I screamed, don't do this thing, America. Don't do this thing so foolishly. If you're gonna have a black president, I'm not sure that's your answer, but if you're gonna have a black president, let him have a black mama. Get Nancy Wilson, Shirley Chisholm, uh, Coretta King, I mean Sarah Vaughn, somebody other than a floozy, I mean a whore, a slut. Named Stan Lynn from Kansas. I mean one of the biggest sluts that ever walked the streets of Hawaii was that boy's mama. <laughs> I said it then. Amen. I said, don't do this. Don't do this. They did it anyway. But my question is this, is that, so black, you know, he's gonna be our, oh, we have to pay our light bill no more. We're gonna buy, pay our phone bill. Uh, things are gonna change. We're gonna have equality. We're gonna come up in the world. We're gonna be somebody. Uh, we're gonna have better housing. The ghettos are gonna vanish. Uh, we got better education. Uh, better politicians. No more police brutality. Uh, prisons are gonna, you know, on and 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 on. The scale just gets, he's gonna do all of this for us. We gotta have it, Pastor Manny. You wrong, Pastor Manny. You get you need to get in the program. You wrong, Pastor Manny. But you know, my question is this: Did any of that happen? Did any of it happen? Okay, so he gave you a track phone. All right, okay, so. <laughs> Are we better people? Are there fewer people in prison? Do we have a better political class? Do we? Have the ghettos vanished? Uh, uh, better colleges? Better schools? Is there less sickness? Less uh, death rates of juncture? Are we better off now since we had him? Are we? Tell me, talk to me. Nope, you know. Eight years, he had eight years to change the dynamics. Eight years. Is racism gone? Anybody call you a nigga recently? Anybody want to call you one recently? I mean, is racism gone? Are you respected when you go into a group, you go into Starbucks, <laughs> and you ask for a latte? They say you need some molasses, that's what you need. No, I, I mean, are you, are, is racism gone? I mean, is some of the racism gone? Well, let me ask you another question. Now, this is really a humdinger. Is there more racism than there was before him? I mean, what did Obama do for you? What did he do? What did he do for anybody? What did he do? What's better? Name me one thing that's better. One thing, just one thing that he did in eight years that has made your life better. Do you make more money? Can your children and grandchildren get jobs now? Where are they? Is it better? I told you no. It was never going to happen. He was never sent for that purpose. Anyway, I understood, however, that while I didn't I would tell you, but I understood, 400 years of slavery can make you trigger happy. You know, Jim Crow slavery, then Jim Crow, then civil rights, and it can make you trigger, trigger happy. By, by, by trigger happy, I mean, you're going to take a chance anyway. So well, I, well, I might, well, might as well just go all in. <laughs> it look, look like nothing. We would have civil rights. We didn't have Martin King. We didn't have all. And still, things are getting worse. So we, well, let's go with a black president. Maybe that'll do it. I can understand that. No, I can understand that. I don't agree with it. I think it's, I think it's foolish. But I understand why you were trigger happy. But you're still going to hell. My, no, don't forget about that. You're still going to hell. But that's not what I want to talk to you about. Stand up, here's what I want to talk to you about. Here's what I want to say to you. 
because I figure you know. Now here's where y'all got the advantage. Amen. Here's where you got the drop. Everybody know what the drop is? <laughs> here's where y'all got the drop. I don't talk to you about what Obama has not done. What I want to ask you, you see all these crazy ass white people running around behind tribulation Trump? You see how crazy they are for him? Asses in the Bible. Thou shalt not cover his neighbor's ox nor his ass nor anything else about him. And don't you talk to me about context. First of all, you don't know how to conjugate a verb. You're <laughs> talking about context. You ain't been no English class. You ain't no English professor. And don't you talking about old context either. <laughs> anyway, see all these people. I mean, have you ever seen anything like, except for y'all, with Trump? Now, here's where you got to drop, right? Y'all gave everything, gave up Jesus. You gave up everything, gave up Pastor Manning for Obama. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? But here, these white folk then gave up everything for tribulation drug. And guess what? They're gonna get less than y'all got. You can tell them. You can tell them, homie, this I done been there, done that. <laughs> Been there, done that. You ain't gonna get nothing from this man. He was not sent to do anything for you. But you see how crazy they are? And you can sit back in your, in your rocket chair and say, you know, they, they, we used to be like that. We used to be just like them people. We, but you know, way back. I don't know if y'all were quite as bad as some of these people. I see how they run behind Trump. These people are bad. I mean, bad, bad news. Take a The Japheth people. I use white and Japheth interchangeably because not everybody knows what Japheth is, right? The white people think that tribulation Trump is going to bring them to world dominance. They're going to make white people make America white again. Make it, he said, make it great again. But you know, the code language. But, I mean, and it would be awfully, because, you know, maybe you're Japheth for something. You listen to me, and now you're ticked off. And I'd be mean, awfully arrogant of you to say, well, we expect that from black people, but we white people have got to, okay, see, I see, I see that, you see, and I see, I see, now you see, you think you better, you think your man is better. See? <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's anything like this. Because that's what some people think. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we try to tell them uh, about, about Obama, but no, J, tribulation, tribulation. Let me tell you what, why y'all got the drop. Let me tell you what the Republican Party, not me, not the Mau Mau's, not the Black Panthers, not Black Lives Matter, not the NAACP, not the Black Caucus. Let me tell you what white Republicans at the head of the Republican ticket have said about tribulation, Trump. I'll just read off a few of them. Um, Mitt Romney, who was the last nominee of the Republican Party in 2012, the highest ranking public and who led the Republican Party until the election in November 8th, where Tribulation Trump was illegally elected, Mitt Romney was the leader of the whole Republican kit and caboodle. Mitt Romney said on several occasions about Tribulation Trump, that he was unfit for the office of president. That he was a con man. Now this is not a black man, this is not John whosoever, this is this, uh, uh, Elijah coming. This is a white man. The highest ranking white politician in America, Mitt Romney said he's unfit. New York Mayor, Bloomberg, I wouldn't call him a Republican, he's assassinated between whatever was convenient for him at the time. New York billionaire, mayor of the city of New York for three times under the Republican ticket, said that Tribulation Trump is a con man. Bloomberg said, I know a con man when I, they lived here in New York together for the last 70 years, both of them. And, and Bloomberg, a Jew, 
said he's a con man and that he's broke, that he ain't got no money. Now these aren't black people, this ain't black people. These, these aren't black people, this ain't Justin Jackson. I shopped and called them, I mean, you don't stand there, but no, these are, these are stomped down white people saying this about Trump, that he's unfit. He's unfit to be, he's mentally unfit for the office of president. Forget about his politics. He's a liar, they say. He's a con man. Ted Cruz said it. Ted Cruz had to defend his wife with the fact that Trump is a liar. Marco Rubio said it. John McCain has said it. We're talking about the highest level of white men in America. All have said with in chorus and in unison and all together that Trump is a liar and a con man and he's unfit. They've all said it. I'm not talking about black people. Oh, I can understand if you think I'm saying I'm black, so I'm against them. Jesse Jackson said it. Al Sharpton said it. Obama was saying it. So you're black. No, these are white men that says he's unfit. And guess what? They're right. The man ain't fit to be nobody's president. He ain't fit to represent me or you. And yet, here's a man who denies the truth. The other day, jobs report came out. 222,000 new jobs have been created. Just yesterday. And the employment rate has ticked up from 4.1% to 4.4%. Now, all the time when Tribulation Trump was running for office, the employment rate that was up in the, at 10.8% when Obama took over kept ticking down and ticking down. And every quarter, every month, more jobs were created, were added to the economy. And every time a report came out on the campaign trail, Tribulation Trump would say it's fake news. It ain't true. The employment did not create that many jobs. And his cheers go, <laughs> his supporters. That's right, there ain't no job been created. They said the employment went down. Oh, they, Tribulation Trump said, fake news. The other day, when the, since he's now president, the same reporting agency, nothing changed, said the job to create, said, I did it. See, I, <laughs> the unemployment rate down, he said, I did it. I just did it. It's because of me. And he's a man who denies truth, and he doesn't even realize what he's doing. And you would think some of his supporters, I mean, don't they do what the hell? But as far as he is concerned, now, I mean, let's say for instance, it wasn't about make America white again, it's make America great again. Is a person with those kinds of ethics, those kinds of denials, those kinds of persons who look like they are puppet to some Soviet nation, communist nation, does that look like the kind of quality that would make America great. I mean, you know, if you're looking for a husband, right? Or wife. You know, years ago, uh, my mother and my sister used to make, used to cut out biscuits and make the dough, you put a little water, a little milk in it, the flour, and you roll it all up and dry it out, and then you cut the biscuit. And I don't know, so the biscuit had a crust on my mom would take it and put it on the elbow, hit it on the elbow. I don't know if y'all know anything about that. And then she put it in the pan. Well, if you're looking for a woman to make biscuits, if she ain't got no elbow, my God. <laughs> Hell, Trump ain't got no elbow. <laughs> How's he gonna make America great again? He doesn't have the substance. He doesn't have the ethics. He doesn't have the morality. He doesn't have the psychotics. I mean, come on, give me a break. Make, he's gonna make America great again. <laughs> I, I, this thing gets beyond bizarre. 